live recording at Steve Theriot's studio in Viva Las Vegas mm. with Ty Elam from Cradle of Thorns slash Video Drone for all those who know. Slash Karma Hit List slash um, Arrival of Fawn for a slash second. Scapegoat slash. Wait, slash, you are <laughs> my scapegoat, baby. Okay. Okay, first off, let me start by thanking everyone. Thanking you. For no. Coming back, never realized you went anywhere, but anywho. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of fans around the world who have missed you and your contribution to the music world, myself included, mm-hmm. you know, because I get to experience all this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Theriot, which is the new guitarist for Cradle of Thorns, has... Um, let us know that you've been a lot through or been through a lot since the last days of Video Drone. A lot of personal and professional hardships that probably delayed your return. Would you care to discuss what happened during this hiatus? Wow. Where to begin on that one? <clears throat> um, it all started. Um, no, um, well, a lot of personal things came up. Uh, three children. Um, uh, uh, actually being dropped from a record company, which was Elementary Reprise, Warner Brothers, um, during the time frame uh, of uh, the release of Video Drone Record. That kind of uh, put a little stop to things. Um, we actually did record the John, uh, Ty Jonathan Down video, but um, the release of the single never happened due to our uh, just lack of interest on the point of our, our label. Um, Pretty much Warner uh, was the one I, from what I hear, is this wasn't interested in pushing it. Uh, Static X was a lot more important. Anyways, um, but <coughs> it did it did slow me down. It did um, having to uh, to raise my family without the help of music. Music never really helped in the first place, but it did um, somewhat support my family. So I did have to come up with other means of doing that and thank god i do have good friends outside of music and they were they gave me a uh, uh the occupation which i do do now and that is uh i am uh i'm a professional house painter so if you need your house painted <laughs> i'm the best <laughs> anyways but outside of that it, it does um it, it the taking off of uh, uh taking a break has given me a chance to actually uh, look back on the music that I did do and uh, realize the parts in music which were most important and that's not making money or doing it for the point of making money but for the point of actually doing it to contribute to the art part of music which I think is lacking big time anyways great well we all need that in this world yeah definitely. Uh, Somebody... what would you say brought you back to the music int- industry um, or to doing music again uh, getting away from the, your typical uh, music artist uh, guy with your latest haircut and nice tattoos or whatever and getting more around people that are more interested in like the actual focus of music which is uh, introduction from Bottles uh, who plays bass on uh, now Cradle Thorns and um, and uh, new friends that have uh, a wide variety of tastes that uh, has introduced me to a whole nother level of of music, and um, that you know that's what was needed. Definitely, it's the break was needed so I could actually like refocus on what I was there to do in the first place, which is play music. So okay, uh, more specifically speaking, what inspired you to resurrect Cradle of Thorns? Uh, well. When we were actually doing the whole uh, video drone record, um, we were still Cradle of Thorns during the process of making that record. Um, at one point, though, um, our producer, I love him, Death Fieldy, uh, uh, he walked in and he said, you know, do you want to be on the Ben cards next to this band, Cradle of Filth? At the point, I didn't really, uh, I didn't, it didn't really bother me. The Cradle of Filth, I knew that they were a band. I knew uh, that I had been doing Cradle of Thorns for though ten years prior to that, and um, I decided to uh, do the 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 biggest thing that you don't want to do when you're actually uh, playing music, and that is uh, sell out. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, well, what that's would a mess. you say um, as far as the new incarnation of the band? I mean, how does it? Is it, does it feel different than how it was when you were young? 
with the original members? Yeah, uh, <laughs> with the original members. Spent a lot of time practicing now at this point in, in life and whatever else um, with my children and my family and everything. It's it's uh, making the time and um, and being able to put in the amount of work that I used to. I used to put in a lot of hours, and so did the band Cradle of Thorns at the time with the original members where we spent a lot of time touring, a lot of time uh, being able to focus on um, coming up with ideas or whatever else. Um, I guess just with, it's not age, it's just uh, with time and your responsibilities, you have to like make time to play music and it's a little different than having just, uh, you know, you can just do it whenever you want. So um, the ideas though are a little, are, are, we're able to spend a lot more time on them. I mean. Good. So That's good. Yeah. Uh, what about the other members of Videodrome? What are they doing these days in do you still even speak to any of them? Um, not any of them on a daily basis. Uh, Chris Coles, I know. Uh, well, most people know that he went on to do edema um, um, with Marky Chavez. Uh, that was the good edema. Um, and uh, basically, uh, David File, who played guitar in the band, um, was a very successful hairdresser to start with. Um, went back into his career. He does do that now um rowan calvin went on to do a band called throat shot um in okay. bakersfield and uh i rarely see these people uh, mark davis um just him and i just split completely it wasn't a, a anything to do with the music part i think it was just our consumption of uh things uh hallucinetic drugs <laughs> I mean, it's some things. Some people are just not good for you in life, and even if you're coming up with very creative or good music, it's just they're just not needed. So, um, but with um, with Rowan, um, I I really like to work with all these people again. Uh, but you know, and maybe at some time get together and do a, a concert with uh, um, at least the bass player that played on Download This, which is pretty spackle. Kind of like a reunion type deal for a good yeah, time. Yeah, and do just maybe a couple of shows of the original lineup, but as uh, Cradle Thorns download this and not Video Drone. I'm not really interested in ever doing that as a whole piece ever again. So Interesting. Yeah. Since the birth of the Internet, file sharing has become a widespread phenomenon around the world. This, of course, has brought up important issues such as intellectual property theft, where people are downloading music, movies, ebooks, etc., for free. Uh, musicians, however, seem somewhat divided about this. Bands such as Metallica, who sued for file sharing uh, for free, uh, company Napster almost a decade ago, are loudly condemning online music sharing, whereas Artists such as Radiohead, Jonah Matragna, and Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails are freely advocating it and experimenting with it and their own material. I suppose the question I would like to ask is, what are your opinions on the music or on this music sharing debate and do you see the music world benefiting or suffering from file sharing? Um, I, I, I don't see any problem with sharing files. Um, I think there was a point in music where you could actually like sample another artist and get away with it. And if you did it in the right, in the right way, or if you, uh, did something that was actually, if not as good or better, um, with their sample idea, you could actually do it. And, um, I know we did it. We did everything from, uh, Cheech and Chong to, um, Everybody. I mean, there wasn't anybody I don't think we didn't sample. Um, but now, as far as uh, residuals and getting paid, um, bands like Radiohead are uh, a great live band and can actually go out and perform their music live. Um, Nine Inch Nails is another good live performing band. And I think it's pushing the artists to go back to what they uh, should be able to do in the first place. And that's not only record records, but perform their music live and if you're good at it you don't really need a record company or anybody to uh sell your cd you could do it out of your trunk of your car if you need to and then charge people to get into your show and pay for your, uh, maybe a good shirt idea not something that you know um you can buy at target or something you know so yeah 
Right. We all like varieties. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see a lot of artists, mostly indie like yourself, are distributing their own material online these days. Sometimes without the financial backing of big recording companies, which is basically what you were just saying right now, uh, which in turn cuts out the middleman. Do you think the future of music will see the end of record labels and more independent self-governed artists? Yeah, I, it's already happening um, and it has been happening. Um, uh, when I was with Video Drone, we were coming on the very uh, the cuffs of that whole um, the internet being in in such control over the industry, and um, um, I, I I think that if a band is is good enough, they can actually come up with other different points of media besides just uh, music. They can do videos. They can do. Uh, all these other different versions of the art form and use it to their to 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 keep themselves going as far as financially um they if if they're talented enough they they i, I haven't met a musician who hasn't come up with a good t-shirt idea or something else i think these people that uh, uh, back in the day had control over their t-shirt site and stuff like that didn't really get the, the artist point across anyway. So now it's giving the artist uh, the chance to actually step up to the plate and be a true artist and do their T-shirts, their own stickers, their own everything, and involve their friends and whatever else and make money for not only themselves but their friends and people around them and create families. like a – Yeah, families of artists and families of art. And, uh, and everyone makes money, not just one guy comes up and – wins a music award and you know Shares the has to thank the them life. over like picking up this gold uh, piece of plastic or something whatever now going get. back to the video drone years uh what was it like being on elementary records was the catalyst that resulted in your band parting ways with them what exactly was that um Let's, questions uh, questions yeah well no the this question is probably a pretty in-depth <laughs> One, I mean, I could go pretty in depth with this one. Um, I know that as far as record sales, we went on a tour with Rob Zombie and Corn. Rock is dead. Our record company thus it released a single called Faceplant that sounded like maybe we were um, in Oasis or something. It was the song on the record that was not really a good to be released during the whole vibe of being out with say rock bands like. Uh, Rob Zombie and 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 Corn. So if we were to release something like say Ty Jonathan Down, um, Sleep with Twenty Bucks, or Alone with Twenty Bucks, or or something uh, that Power to Tolls for Girls, something that was a little more harsh, a little more like we we were a very diverse band amongst uh, uh, a, a metal scene and. Uh, fitting within just metal was not what we were trying to do anyways and it was it was a hard it was a hard sell so that's that's what happens if you don't have the people or if you yourself are not in control of your own music and telling uh, these people play this song on the radio then you can't really cry about what happens yeah, when it goes the goes awry or goes bad so um if you know uh as as far as drugs um the use of substance to the level that the whole band, including myself, were were under. Uh, I think if I could go back and do it again, I, I mean, I'm not going to be Brad Renfro and say that I wouldn't, you know, I don't ever do them. Next thing you know, I'm dead. But I'm going to say that you definitely don't want to add any substances or addictions into your into the things that you've spent uh, 15 to 20 years working hard on, and then expect them to turn out good. So. Now, what about the guys from Corn? Uh, do you still talk to them, and what's your opinion on Head's conversion to Christianity? Um, I haven't even been told that I've been dropped from a record company. Um, this is where it gets a little strange. I, I don't really dislike any members of the band. Um, do you still talk to them? Actually, I think Head was the only person that um, I, I – I, he played a show in Bakersfield – and I uh, was allowed at this point to get backstage. I, I tried to get backstage at other shows, but they, they somewhat uh, 
dropped me off the guest list. Um, Blackballed you. Blackballed me. <laughs> um, they were a little afraid of me, and I would have been afraid of a guy, you know, uh, rolling around on roller skates at that point. I was doing stuff like that and and not really <laughs> in the proper state of mind. Um, but also, um, when I did ask Ted, he was – he, uh, it's not, it's not a Christianity thing with him. Head was the only guy that I could actually have a conversation with outside of Fieldy about things outside of music. He was, uh, uh he, and still is a very, uh, uh, intellectual guy. He's, uh, he's intelligent. Um, he's, uh, he thinks about his children. He's, um, he's far more than just a musician. He's, um, uh, a pretty good person to be around and his conversion in Christianity was probably needed. He got a little out there himself and on substances and he found another way to, um, to, um, to do that and, and be happy with himself and be around his children. He didn't need corn. Which is most corn need corn him. Needs. Definitely. So, um, I'm going to say that. <laughs> definitely. I second that. Notion. <laughs> uh, now I read somewhere that you taught Jonathan Davis how to sing. I don't really know the validity of that. I believe I read it on a few online like news sites. Um, would you say that's true, or how would you put that in perspective? Um, this one, I, I wouldn't. I don't even know how to put this one in perspective. I, I think I, I remember Jonathan Davis being in a band called Sex Art, and uh, I remember at one point uh, I I had. The, the love just running through me of music and I wanted to I wanted to be a part of everything that was going on in the music scene in Bakersfield and I remember going by and um, listening to John's band at that point because I had recorded with John's dad and um, I uh, he he had a, a lot of potential to 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 do other things besides just sing in the way he was singing I think uh, I didn't actually sit down and say, hey, this is what you need to sing. I think it was me being in the room, going to his shows, singing, being on stage with him at that point, and helping build up the person that he uh, became, which is a very strong lead vocalist. And so basically you just kind of gave your input. I and gave my input, and, and, and definitely anybody asked me if Jonathan Davis was the – and Sex Art was a great band, I would say straight up, if I didn't believe it or not – they were the best band that ever came out of Bakersfield. I always stood behind uh, making sure that he had that uh, backbone. That Do you, you know, still feel that way? I, I think he's a great musician. I think he's um, uh, he's the probably the biggest force uh, the biggest force behind keeping Corn going because of his. I, I know him as a person. Um, to be a very strong-willed person, he will get up on the st on stage with a dress on and have no problem with it. And there's a lot of people that can't do that, you know. They're I personally have seen pictures of you wearing a dress as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there there was there's there's things you mistakes you make. <laughs> it's all in good fun. But it's all you know, and all, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, with 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 teaching John, I I never. Wanted to sit down with John. I don't even think I had the time or the the uh, the. Uh, I suffer from uh, adult attention. D uh, a a, a D D. Yeah, oh, real bad. So goes. I mean, sitting down with a person and teaching them something is nothing I ever did. I but I did support him and I did. Uh, um, I think he came back and kind of uh, did that for me too. So that's that's a good thing. So basically, you didn't teach him how to sing. What you're saying is, is he, his voice was already there. I just helped kind of mold and push him in the right direction. Yeah, stage <laughs> presence and all the good stuff that you got to have on top of the voice yeah. and the whatever else is, yeah. uh, which you know most people don't have. Yeah. You got to have it in you to be able to do that. Period. Uh, what do you think about the current state of m the music industry right now, especially in regards to genres such as emo, uh, which have usurped new metal, a genre I've never really saw or I've never really seen you a part of, um, as the new market saturating style rock? Um, I, I, I remember getting that term new <laughs> metal kind of forced on, upon me and I, I I definitely emo, would emo. and but as far as emo I, I, I 
I, I don't really get it. I guess that was like a Descendants thing. I don't know. I, I really didn't. I really don't follow music to the point that I used to, and because I, I really don't have the time and are the money to be able to. Uh, I mean, uh, to go out and purchase every new artist. Uh, but I know that uh, some of it lacks character. I think it at, uh, it reminds me of more of like a. Um, a, a really watered down version of punk rock or a watered down version of of today's society sort of like what pe- uh it, it, it almost it sounds like a, a bad pop song uh, just repeated over and over and over and over and over and i thought emo guys had glasses and stuff i guess it's changed they got they don't wear the glasses anymore. they wear the skinny jeans well I, or the pants or whatever I, it's just i think that's what's happened with music in general is that people have generalized it as being emo i i want to see a band come out that does no one that just even this uh, Coheed and Cambria band. I mean, I, there's there's a I level. Understand what you're there's saying. just there's there's a level of it that you can take, and it just seems like they repeat the same idea constantly. They don't yeah. try to uh, bring in anything besides what other people matters, right now are enjoying. Instead, I don't of, personally care for it either. Like as far as something that I'm going to go out and spend money on either. Yeah. So I kind of got around that short one. Term. But as like, far as the jeans, I mean, I think the jeans are really cute on girls. <laughs> but a guy that wears pants that small must have a real small penis, yeah. too. Oh, exactly. And the fat girls that wear them is so uh, not cool. No, I mean, but it, to each their own liking. It, I mean, it, they, they, <laughs> I mean it, it happened in the 80s, and it, it just seems like it's repeated again this time in a different light. But it's just it hasn't uh, progressed as much as I thought it would by now. So. Yeah. I like Madonna, like, 80s. Like, her style was cool, you know what I mean? But the emo thing kind of makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I don't know if these are rumors or not, but I heard from a source that you were writing a novel, either a bi- biography or a science fiction one. What's the validity on that? And if it is true, what can we expect to see from your work, and when can we expect to see your work? Um, I, I, like I say, I, I can't sit down long enough to even tie my own shoes. So, um, ADHD uh, and uh, yeah, uh, but, <laughs> but I do write, uh, and I do write a lot, um, writing a, you know, a biography. I, 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 I still think I have a lot of life to still see. I think I've seen a lot of the negative parts and I think to complete a biography, I have to have some really good, good things happen. And that's what I'm working on. Um, well, from but, what I understand, you have three good, real good things that have already happened. You said you had three kids. <laughs> yeah. You've got that part at least down. But I mean, as far as writing a, 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 a science fiction, I write everything. I write um, stuff that sounds like uh, ramblings and scribbles from like, um, I, I do it all. I, I Try well, I personally least. actually have seen some of your writing, so as far as the I got a good Rob Zombie idea, though I need to contact him. And, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and as far as the autobiography question, I mean, it's a great question, and it's definitely something I think you should probably put into perspective. Mm-hmm. Cool idea. Yeah. Uh, totally off the subject. Um, yeah. What star sign are you? S- star sign. Yeah, I mean, your birthday is Valentine's oh, yeah. Day, which um, means you're an Aquarius. So. An Aquarius, very. Uh, I, I, I'm. I've read all the, the the astrology stuff, and I I fit somewhat in there. Uh, I don't you like confrontation, but uh, but <laughs> I wouldn't call myself like a peace loving hippie. So I mean, it just doesn't fit right there. Yeah, so. you're a little too <laughs> radical to be a hippie. I agree. But I but I I am a. a an Aquarius, anyways. I was going to actually ask you what you were doing these days, but you kind of answered that earlier on as far as what you were doing for a living as far as being a professional painter as far yeah. as houses and whatnot. Yeah, painting houses, uh, interior design. What, what are you doing outside of what you do for work mm-hmm. as far as these days are concerned besides work and here and there, being able to do the recordings that you've done and mm-hmm. music and whatever else. It... I've played in a lot of bands. I've, I've uh, since Video Drone. I, I, I think every <laughs> band in Bakersfield has had me as their singer at least once. I'm, and I wouldn't say that I'm. So you're a band tour. No, no <laughs> I, and it's not that I like to be. It's just I enjoy. I enjoy. Totally being, messing with. I you. enjoy being into the in the, around people and and kind of 
figuring out what they do is and and either being a part of their music or whatever else i mean i, I being a singer in a band i, I don't know it's, it's like playing a part and sometimes my part doesn't fit well i'm like you know i got a square and i'm trying to fit in and uh in a, like your circle trying to fit into the square and it just doesn't quite work. Your yeah, and, you know, and sometimes yeah. the, I just don't fit with the egos. So. Uh, it's could probably because you have one. I got a big one. Yes. Uh, final question for the evening, um, which I've been waiting to ask for a long time. Are you really Marilyn Manson? Oh, no. And no. by the looks of you, it does not look like it. No, no. Way shorter, <laughs> a little stockier. Uh uh, and also, I, I just... I, definitely better looking. You know what? That uh, Marilyn Manson is definitely... Uh, I, I would really have liked to have <coughs> had his career and his opportunities. Definitely. No, but seriously, uh, have you ever met Marilyn Manson? Or more specifically, um, has he heard your LSD song? I hope so. <laughs> I hope he's heard that song. That's a... That it's a song, must. It's a must. That song is... Um, Someone out there, get his ass on the freaking computer and yeah. let him hear it. Uh, and you know what? And, <laughs> and he's one of the most talented musicians and, and artists out there. And I, I really someday love to have the opportunity to work with him or uh, oh. do something uh, along the lines of, of with him. So, And the, the artists he's choosing to work with these days are, are really, really good. So um, yeah. he's, he's, he's a good guy. Um, and I buy all his records, and, you know, that's a good yeah. thing. I you actually got a buy of his them. Shirts. I don't download them. I actually buy them. Good. So, yeah, it's a good thing. Good. All I've right. actually bought a couple, too. And thanks, everyone, for listening to the interview this evening. Yeah. Um, just I'm so glad, everyone I'm is glad aware. glad to have gotten this done for you, man. We, thanks. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> but just so everyone is aware, we don't just have <laughs> Ty Elam in the house tonight. We have actually his band members as well Matt Wilkinson, AKA Bottles. We also have Steve Theriot, a uh, bass player, and Steve's the guitarist. Yeah. Um, and they've both, they, we've all been able to and, enjoy and this produ- tonight. And slight producer. And, oh, yeah. Uh, he's a little bit of what's been he's driving this force here. So. so it's real cool. I've got to listen to it, everyone. So, so. it's good stuff. And we're so going to get, get back ready. to that. So Have a good night. Yeah.